My name is Ed Selich. I'm president of Speak Up Newport. Welcome to our uh, candidates forum this evening. Uh, our program is being broadcast on Zoom. We had about uh, 80 folks sign up uh, last time I checked before the meeting. We're also being broadcast live on Channel 3, Cox, and 87 on Spectrum. Uh, the program will be shown on the Speak Up Newport website. It'll be on the city website. And if that isn't enough for you, you can always go to YouTube. <laughs> uh, we've got a few VIPs here this evening I'd like to introduce. They're actually, uh, looks like they're all former Newport Beach mayors. We've got former Mayor Steve Rosansky. Steve, around there somewhere. <laughs> former Mayor Rush Hill. <laughs> former Mayor Evelyn Hart and uh, former Mayor Keith Curry. I want to thank the bungalow for providing the food. I hope you all enjoyed the uh, food you had this evening. Before I get into the program, I've got a couple of announcements. On May the 11th, which is our normal uh, second Tuesday of the month uh, program time, we're going to have a program on the Measure B elected mayor proposition that's going to be on the June uh, primary ballot. and. Uh, Noah Blom from the City Council is going to speak in, uh, in favor of Measure B, and Walter Starr will be speaking in a opposition to Measure B. And uh, that's, uh, reception is at 5.15, and the program starts at 6 o'clock, just like we normally do. And then the Mayor's Dinner, that's going to be May the 19th. Uh, you can get a ticket on our website or do an, be an underwriter. Uh, you want to do it quickly. We're selling out really fast. It's always a sellout every year, so be sure you do that. So before I get into the program, I'm going to describe the, uh, the new supervisor and assembly districts that we have. And so if we can show that on our Zoom program to the guys in the back room there. And on the screen in the inside the room here. We get that up on the screen, guys? There we go. There we go. So on the left is the 72nd Assembly District, and you can see that it goes from Seal Beach all the way down to Laguna Beach and back into uh, Lake Forest. It includes Huntington Beach and Newport Beach. So that's quite a change from uh, how we've been represented in the past geographically. And then on the right is the new fifth uh, supervisorial district. And uh, you can see there we're going from Costa Mesa down to uh, San Clemente, some parts of it all the way out to Coto de Casa, Laguna Woods, Aliso Viejo, Laguna Nigel. So our district boundaries have changed uh, quite a bit with the, uh, with the uh, new census that was done and the new district designations. So with that, I'm going to introduce our moderator for this evening, uh, Deborah Allen. She's a member of the Speak Up uh, Newport board. Deborah, take it away. Thank you, Ed. And thank you all for coming. This is a very important um, uh, election coming up. Uh, I was told to, to mention that in each of these um, uh, seats, the 72nd Assembly District, you will vote for one candidate. And in the supervisorial seat, you will vote for one candidate. So while you're listening, keep that in mind. I will also tell you that every one of these candidates has a bio that is just amazing. Uh, replete with many, many accomplishments because many of them have been on boards and commissions and councils and been mayors and what have you. Um, and, and in my uh, quest to make sure that you get the information that you want, I thought I'm not going to tell you too much about them because you didn't come here to hear me talk, you came here to hear them talk. Uh, the format is going to be, we're going to take the, super, uh, we're going to take the 72nd Assembly District first that would be uh, Diane Dixon and, and Benjamin Yu. Yu. Yes. Um, there was a third, there is a third candidate. Um, uh, her name is uh, Julie, Ju Judy, Judy Mancuso. Uh, and she regrettably had a conflict. And so we appreciate the fact that she responded to us. It's just she had to be somewhere else this evening. Um, and with that, the other, um, uh, the other four candidates are all uh, for uh, running for the supervis supervisorial seat, and um, the format for both will be the same. We will have the two candidates for the 72nd 
uh, each speak for five minutes, and then each gets a two-minute rebuttal. Then we will go on to the supervisorial candidates, the same format. Each one gets five minutes, and then we have a two-minute rebuttal. We have a timer right here, my fellow board member, Robin Grant, who is wonderful at timing. <laughs> for the five minutes, she will give a one-minute warning and then a time's up. Uh, she has a sign. <laughs> and for the, uh, uh, the two-minute rebuttal, she has a 30-second warning and time's up. We're going to enforce those pretty, pretty strictly, and I'll apologize to you in, the, in advance if I seem to cut somebody off in the mid-sentence, but we do have a whole lot of folks that want to talk, and then we do want to have time at the end for you to come up to the microphone and ask questions, and we want to be able to have time to get those questions asked and answered. So without that further ado, as soon as I find my glasses so I actually can read this stuff, uh, I will introduce the two candidates for the supervisor, uh, for the uh, 72nd Assembly District seat. See, I'm even getting confused. It's hard. Um, first to my immediate left is Diane Dixon. Diane spent 40 years as a business executive. Uh, she's been elected to the Newport Beach City Council since 2014. She's been mayor twice. Uh, she has served as chair of the Water Quality and Tidelands Committee and chair of the Finance Committee. She's actively involved in holding town hall meetings with her constituents, business owners, and residents. She's been an active member on several philanthropic community-based boards of directors for nearly four decades, including United Way, YMCA, Public Television, USC Board of Counselors, and on and on. Uh, she is married for 46 years to Pat Dixon, a career prosecutor who currently serves as special counsel to the Orange County District Attorney's Office. Again, uh, Judy Mancuso is not able to join us, so the next is Benjamin Yu, a husband, father, and Army veteran, businessman, and community activist. He immigrated to New York City as a teenager with very few dollars and worked on various jobs to support his family. Eventually, after moving to Orange County for its ex excellent education, safe neighborhood, and beautiful coast and weather, he chairs his city commission and serves on several boards and organizations. His family has a business that has regularly contributed to local communities, law enforcement, nonprofit groups for veterans, elderly, disabled, and disadvantaged families, especially during the recent challenging times. If elected, he will be a tireless advocate for public safety, fair taxation, school choice, attainable home ownership, and transparent and fiscally responsible government. And again, this is just a little sprinkling of all the many co accomplishments of both of these candidates. So, um, Diane, would you like to start the five minutes and Robin, start the clock. All right. Is this on? <laughs> All right, well, it's great to be here tonight. Thank you, Speak Up Newport. Thank you, Ed and Deborah and Robin for, for making this form of democracy possible for all of us. Many of you know I'm Diane Dixon. As Debbie said, I've been a councilwoman. I'm in my eighth year. I've served as mayor twice, and it's been the greatest honor in my life to serve the people of Newport Beach. Uh, I'm running for assembly, District 72, for one fundamental reason, because we have big, pro big problems in California, and I intend to help go to Sacramento and help solve them. What are, what are the problems? And, and I'll spend a few minutes because it is overwhelming. Just this week, Chapman University published research stating, and I quote this, it sums it up pretty well. California is plagued by economic immobility and inequality, crushing housing and energy costs, and a failing education system. And if this isn't an indictment of the current policymakers in Sacramento, I don't know what is. Uh, just a few facts to remind us of what we're living in in the United States as well as in the country, in the, in, in the California. Just yesterday, the Labor Department released new numbers that show our inflation in California has increased 8.5%, the worst in 40 years. Bloomberg estimates that Californians will spend an additional $5,200 per year, more than last year, for just basic life necessities. In one year, food is up 10%. 
gas prices are up 48 percent. And we know that the Democrats in Sacramento have refused to take any action to give the hardworking California taxpayers a break. So that's a problem. So on this happy note, I am running to go to the very source of the problems in, Sa in California, which is headquartered in Sacramento, and sh shout from the rooftops if I have to, to stop the policy craziness in California. We have a $60 billion surplus in Sacramento, and the taxpayers need to have some relief. A few facts. We have the highest gas tax in the nation. We pay an average of $1.18 gallon in taxes. Other states have Arizona, 20 cents per gallon. Two weeks ago, the Democrats had an opportunity to give it back, 51 cents a gallon. A tax holiday, they refused. Instead of tax relief, the governor has proposed free bus rides. This is not tax relief. This is an affordability crisis for Californians. And I'm running as a problem solver to get things done. We, the fundamental problem in California is we have a one-party state, a one-party supermajority. And so they have, there's no debate, no consensus-driven uh, policymaking. It's one size, one party. And this is why we have the problems we have in California. We need to have better representation, a two-party system, which is fundamental to our whole system of government. We, I want to return, I think we all want to return California to be the golden state that we all knew it would be. Let me just tell a quick story because we're losing business and residents. And as I walk this, this district, people are telling me, well, I hope I'm here in June because I just sold my house and I'm moving to Tennessee. I heard that Sunday when I was walking. Texas is claiming to be the next golden state. I heard the governor of Texas was here a few weeks ago. He told the story of Elon Musk wanted to expand his manufacturing plant in Fremont. And Newsom said, well, it's going to take about five years and all these long list of permits. Elon Musk, this is a true story, said, well, I'm going to go talk to the governor of Texas. He goes, and that was Ju July of 2020. By December 2021, last, De uh, last December, the plant was up and running with 5,000 workers. So we are losing jobs. We're losing good manufacturing capability. California ranks 44th in the country for manufacturing. W manufacturing is what brought middle class uh, jobs and family life and life to California. And we are, we've, we've become a service economy. We have to restore higher paying jobs in California. We also have the highest electricity prices. We have 50% of the homeless. We have 50% of the welfare. Homicides are up. Okay. Crime, public safety. We must make crime illegal, <laughs> make crime illegal again. Too much crime, public safety is my priority, ending homelessness, working to solve homelessness, education choice, lower taxes, we tax too much, we're the second highest tax uh, state in the country. There is so much that needs to be fixed because one party has been in control for two decades. We all know that's the source of the problem. I want, uh, we've got to change the public safety laws. I've been married 46 years to a career prosecutor, so public safety is the most important thing. We have to support public, small business, uh, parental choice, education choice, and get this state back on the right track. It is clearly not on the right track, and that's why I'm going to Sacramento, and I appreciate everybody's support. Thank you. Am I on time? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Diane. And now, Mr. Benjamin Yu. Hi. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Thank you. It's, first of all, it's an honor and privilege to come here and speak before you. I mean, I come my family vacation short, so I drove five hours from Vegas back home to for this five minutes here, so I'm going to cut short about who I am. You know, you can go online, like BenjaminU.com, find my bio. I came here when I was a teenager, grew up in New York, serving the military after 9 11, through me Midwest, and uh, Living in uh, Washington State around Seattle, and eventually moved to Orange County for the weather, for the good education, and especially for the good people of the neighborhood. I mean, I'm a, on a way game here, but I let you know I've been living in Newport Beach as a part time resident since 2011. Uh, there is called my married Newport Coast Villa. My family owe a partial fraction ownership there. My favorite place is that beach front the burger, and uh, my most exciting experience is waiting at the Dory Market at 4 a.m. in the morning, not just for the fish, but just for standing there and chatting with people, wait for the sunrise. Okay, go back to California. It's a beautiful state, but I live on both sides of the coast of the United States. It's so beautiful. It's the great country on the earth, but what we experience in California is no different than what we see in the European country, in the both sides of the coast, that uh, the policy can go wrong 
which have a lasting effect not only on us but for the future generation to come. I'm only 39 years old, but I have been working for the last 21 years. So I have you know various sectors where small business owners, I especially we realize it's very challenging during the pandemic time, and we see the transformation of the society and how a lot of uh, job got lost, with the increase of labor cost, the uh, clog of supply chain. And what are we gonna do here is deal with the future. In California, proper 47, 57, bad policy passed by voters with good name many years ago. They have a lasting impact on us. What we need to reclassify some of the non-violent crime as a real crime. The folks who did the crime need to go to jail. The folks who did the crime need to pay their time restitution to the victim. In this, in this country, we are sharing the personal responsibility. But in California, that personal responsibility was lost due to the bad policy in Sacramento. And the homeless, that's one of the issues impact every community throughout California. And especially it's important in our economy because what we see here is this very prosperous county here. However, from the Santa Ana and the rural bad is spread into every part of the county that we got the folks who follows to crack the assistance, who may have financial problem, mental problem, substance abuse problem, addiction, who need our help to get back on their feet and to get back, to become a contributing effect, uh, members of the society. Once again, what happened is the system fell down. Throwing money to the problem is not the solution. The solution is you need to head on to solve, solve every single issue, get the people exactly the help they need. When you got back from military, Quarter of the quarter of the homeless population are military veterans, and I myself was once classified as a ho homeless veteran. And uh, I walked down the Harlem of New York, and I was I was joking. I'm probably only a Chinese guy <laughs> living in Harlem, the homeless. <laughs> and what we need is understand the issue and uh, gradually solve the problem piece by piece. We need to restore more in mental institution to help the folks who need. We need to uh, 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 send the folks who have a drug addiction abuse to the place they need help. You know, that, that's the thing we need to change, shift the policy in Sacramento. And go back to gas, we don't even have to men mention about last month, I talked about it. That's the first time while living in America, fuel the gas tank over $100, you know, because they, this fell policy in California, we have a, a Five dollar in Las Vegas. We have a uh, four dollar fifty cents in Arizona. I don't even mention. Maybe four dollar in Tennessee. What we have here is uh, there's a few things we can uh, solve the problem. Uh, short term, we need to suspend the gas tax. Long term speaking, we need to permanently remove the gas tax in addition to uh, uh, provide more supply. Uh, to lower the cost of the market in addition to provide relief uh, for the uh, middle class uh, worker who are commute to work. And uh, additionally, uh, as a veteran, I would say California is one of the most regressive states in, in terms of their program toward veterans. Most of states have a food tax exemption, have more benefits for the veteran who for and suffer for us. But in California, the tax exemption is minimal and all the program is just literally going through motion and uh, under budget. And uh, for more information, just go online. You'll find more information from me through the campaign. But uh, as I said, we need a new generation of folks Thank to understand you, and fight for us. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Diane, you have a two minute rebuttal. And then Mr. Yu, and then Mr. Yu will have the last word. Okay, uh, thank you. California is a great state. That's why we live in California. We live in a beautiful community, Newport Beach, that exemplifies all that's beautiful about California. But we have policies coming out of Sacramento that have really changed the, the business, the, the educational, and the public safety dynamic of this state. And it's changed dramatically, as we all know. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm going to Sacramento to have a voice representing cities. That's what really was my reason why I'm running. As a city official, I see the power grab. I call it the giant sucking sound that is taking power from local governments and depositing it in Sacramento. I call it Moscow on the Sacramento River. It's taking local government's control and authority on land use and planning and public safety and education and sucking it up to Sacramento for central planning purposes 
whether it's affordable housing or whether it's education and public safety, it's, it cannot be a peanut butter approach. Sacram Newport Beach, Huntington Beach, Laguna Beach, uh, Lake Forest, we are not the same as San Francisco, and San Francisco we know has the problem. So we need a new frame of mind for common sense policy making out of Sacramento, fiscal responsibility, uh, focus on local government, local control, focus on business, the manufacturing that made this state great in the, uh, since the 1950s and the 20th century. We have to return to better policy making. We know it is not working. The, the one party has been in charge for 20 years. It is not working. I'm going to Sacramento to work across the aisle. It can be done. A lot of people ask me, can it be done? Yes, it can be done. There are moderate Democrats who will work with Republicans and get good policy making. We have to get off this far left progressive cliff that we're falling off of that's ruining California. I'm going to fight for all of you. Go to my website, Diane Dixon 2020. Two, you know where to reach me, and I'm here for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Diane. And now, Mr. Yu, you have two minutes. Okay, it's not much really rebuttal because not much policy difference between me and Diane here. But what what's different she has here is a party. Uh, before 2018, I don't have party affiliation. Grew up in both sides of the coast and work as a volunteer veteran legislative uh, uh, officer. For me, just work with people from all walk of life and share the common sense approach there and understand where people are coming from and the bridge they out there. From my standpoint, I'm just an independent fighter, fighting for everyday people here, fight for middle class, fight for retirees, fight for, fight for what make common sense, make benefits our community and our life better here. Uh, when I go to Sacramento, the difference here is I have the energy, I have the willingness. I don't have hold out. I don't have any connection to special interests. I, have, I don't have a donor to donate to me five five thousand dollars, three thousand dollars. I found a campaign by my own hard earned money, yeah, because I believe you know with one little change there, we have the butterfly impact that make a little difference for the community for the generation to come here. That's my difference here. Nothing to rebuttal. When I go to Sacramento, I will do more than. What Dan promised. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Yu. Now, um, as I said again, they, these are the two candidates running as opponents in the 72nd Assembly race. I'm going to now introduce the um, four uh, uh, candidates for the 5th District Supervisorial seat, and um, they'll have five, each will have five minutes. Uh, and then each will have a two-minute rebuttal, and then we'll open it up for some questions from you. Um, our first candidate to my immediate left, raise your hand just so they know, okay, is Katrina Foley. She was elected to the Board of Supervisors in a special election in 2021. During her first year on the board, she has many... Um, uh, accolades including local experience to stand up to Sacramento and respond to the city needs after years of neglect and uh, her predecessors by her predecessors and deliver revo results for the community. Katrina is seeking re-election in the newly redrawn District 5 which runs as you can see from the map from Costa Mesa down through San Clemente. Her accomplishments include advocating for small business, championing climate action, and solutions to reduce homelessness, and improving access and quality of mental health care. Super Supervisor Foley previously served as the first directly elected mayor of Costa Mesa, as well as a Costa Mesa City Council member and Newport Mesa Board of Trust uh, School Board of Trustees. Uh, she is a successful attorney and businesswoman. I'm going to let her speak in just a moment, but I'll go through the other introductions. And as people, as I introduce, you kind of raise your hand. I'm sure they can see your cards in front of you. I just want to make sure everyone knows who, who you are. Um, the next candidate is Diane Harkey. She's a candidate for the 5th Supervisorial District. She served for four years on the Dana Point City Council and as mayor of the city in, in 2008. She was elected to the California State Legislature. 
She was reelected and elected to the California State Board of Equalization, serving Orange, Riverside, San Diego, and Imperial Counties. And she was chair of that organization, uh, the first Republican chair in 15 years. She graduated cum laude with a degree in economics from the University of California, Irvine. Prior to her service in politics, she enjoyed a successful 30-year career in corporate finance. Uh, Diane is married to Dan, and they have one daughter, Jacqueline, a successful businesswoman in the Newport Beach area. And I'm not sure if this is uh, her daughter, Jacqueline, or this is uh, Diane, but her passions include jogging, horses, cats, economics, politics, and serving our tarnished golden state. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the next candidate is uh, to, to her immediate left, and the only gentleman in that collection, is um, Kevin Muldoon, who is the current mayor of the city of Newport Beach. Kevin was raised in Orange County, graduated from Chapman Law School and Loyola Marymount University, where he was awarded the Dr. Singleton Award for Excellence in Economics. He worked in the White House Office of Strategic Initiatives before being admitted to the state bar. He practiced as a deputy district attorney in Orange County, and he currently works for a local technology company advising them on numerous startups. Kevin and his wife, Heather, have a two-year-old son, Cannon, and are expecting a baby girl in June. And finally, our last candidate in that group is Pat Bates. Pat had a conflict. However, she sent her um, chief of staff, I believe is your... Uh, campaign staff. Campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Chief ca of campaign staff. Suzette, Suzette Swallow. This is not Suzette's bio. This is Pat Bates's <laughs> bio. I'll take the promotion, though. <laughs> Um, she served uh, She served the county in numerous roles. She helped turn Laguna Nigel into an incorporated city in 1989 and won a seat on its first city council, earning election as the first mayor. From 1998 to 2004, Pat Bates served as California State Assemblywoman. She is the founder of the California Women's Leadership Association, CWLA. In 2006, Pat Bates became the fourth woman to win election to the Orange County Board of Supervisors. She served from 2007 to 2014. Protecting the environment in a fiscally responsible manner is one of Pat Bates's priorities. She has supported measures to address ocean air acidification, integrate scientific data concerning the impact of climate change into state infrastructure engineering, and reinforce opposition to new oil leases near the coast. So that, that is your slate of candidates. And for speaking will be Katrina Foley. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, good evening. Thanks so much for everyone for coming. I'm Katrina Foley, your current county supervisor, and I'm here to earn your vote to keep the job. I ran for supervisor to address community needs and the long-standing issues that people like Diane Dixon and I, who sit on local city councils, we knew that the county was not addressing. When I was elected in the special election last year, I got right to work meeting with all of our constituents, our mayors, our city managers, to find out what issues they care about. And let me tell you, the issues are common. Public safety, ending homelessness, addressing climate action, and of course here, John Wayne Airport and the noise and pollution that it creates. We also, as public safety is our top priority in our office, I actually brought on a Newport resident and former police chief, Dave Snowden, to be my public safety advisor because advocating for community policing, making sure that our, our county is safe and our neighborhoods are safe has been always my top priority. I actually have a 100% voting record for law enforcement at the County of Orange and in my entire career as an elected official. I also voted to, bring, to oppose bringing sexual predators into Orange County and to increase funding for our backlog of rape kits. And if you aren't convinced yet, I've been a victim of crime. Our house was across the street from a detox center. And after that detox center opened up, we had three burglaries. Our home ransacked, my kid's room turned upside down. It was quite scary. That is why I have 
advocated for regulatory reforms as it relates to sober living homes. We must do more. Sacramento has failed us here. I have fought for this as a council member, a mayor, and now as your county supervisor. I've when, when we heard about that terrible tragedy in Santa Ana Heights, I jumped into action. We investigated the uh, Sacramento agency. We learned that they had learned about different issues at that particular space, and they could have prevented this tragedy. So what do we do? We have to all stand together. That's why we're partnering with the County of Orange and the City of Newport Beach to put forth regulatory reforms, a model ordinance that as, your, as a mayor in Costa Mesa, I helped adopt and initiated a litigation strategy to defend. We also must hold those, those operators who are unscrupulous accountable. They are curbing people and contributing to our homeless situation. Let's talk about homelessness. It requires a regional solution. As soon as I became the supervisor, I put forth discretionary funds to do an audit of all the county expenses related to homelessness, mental health, addiction treatment services. And what I found is we spend $1.8 billion well, look around. What is happening? Where's the waste? We need to find that out because it's not working. As also, we did a survey of the chronically homeless in our community. And what we found is not surprising that we have serious addiction issues in our chronically homeless. We must do better to address those issues. As Costa Mesa Mayor, I partnered with the City of uh, Newport Beach, and we worked together both with uh, former Mayor Dixon here, as well as uh, Mayor O'Neill, to build a Costa Mesa Newport Beach shelter, and that has made a lot of difference. It's those kinds of models that we need to continue to work on uh, throughout Orange County. I also believe that encampments should be intolerable. We should not tolerate encampments. We should do something like what we are doing. I secured $3.6 million from the state to clean up uh, the encampment at Talbert Park. And we also, yes, a, a resident nearby, she's very grateful. Um, we also, as part of that cleanup and restoring that park, we're going to take 61 people and turn those into and help them to get housing. Working with the mayors of the city of Huntington Beach, Costa Mesa, and Stanton, we also worked on finding veterans, permanent supportive housing, and converting old crime-ridden motels. Protecting our coast, protecting our environment is a top priority for me. Many of you may have seen our action that we took to protect our coast during the oil spill. That's the kind of results I will deliver. Responsiveness, listening, learning, and taking action. I want to announce that we are soon going to have a fly-friendly program. Over this last year, I've been working tirelessly to reduce the noise and the pollution over your skies, and we're going to be announcing that in the next couple of weeks. Also, wanted to just make sure that you knew that as your watchdog for, count, for the county, I have worked tirelessly to make sure we do not have secret no-bid contracts, that our taxpayer dollars are being spent wisely, and that we have metrics for success to deliver the services that Orange County deserves and needs. I love this community, and I hope that I can earn your vote uh, this month. Thank you. Thank you. Our next candidate is Diane Harkey. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us, and it's an honor to be here tonight. I love Orange County, and I moved here. I moved to Newport Beach when I was 19 years old, went to Orange Coast College, Saddleback College, wrapped up my education at UCI as an adult while raising my daughter. And I had a career here. Uh, I worked in the Fashion Island. I worked on MacArthur and Jamboree, as well as in the uh, park, park plaza area with Bank of America, and I ended up in their national home building unit all the time while raising my daughter. I got involved in public service as, as an elected official in 2004 because my daughter had graduated and went on to college, and I was finally free to do that thing. Um, protecting our neighborhoods is like number one priority with me. We have beautiful neighborhoods and we need to ensure that law enforcement has the resources and the tools that it needs to do so. The county supervisor funds the sheriff, the jails, the district attorney, and all investigative services. And this is really important because they coordinate with your police departments. So that's number one priority with me because we are a little bubble here, uh, kind of an island in the sea of a lot of crime around us. And that's not by accident that we're safe. It's because we elected some good people. We need to fund them. Uh, preserving our quality of life. I want to protect 
citizens from overreaching government mandates, which impact our day-to-day -day life as well as, as our business community. I do oppose masks and vaccine mandates, and I promote therapies and treatments now because we have moved from pandemic to endemic. And it's time for us to move on and use our UCI and Hogue and all of those communities that we have in the health area to get us the services that we need. And we can replace the, or we can add to the vaccine sites some of the treatments so that people can actually get treated when they get sick, because most everything now is asymptomatic. Uh, reduce homelessness, really a big, big issue in this district because there are three categories or three areas of the of the county, and this is the this is the area that really doesn't have a cohesive plan. You can move people out if you have somewhere to move them. I have been working with uh, nonprofits, family assistance ministries, just got introduced to Illumination Foundation, and of course there's Be Well OC. All of those things for homelessness. Mental illness is so important to me. My sister became paranoid schizophrenic at 50 years old. Uh, after the 2008 crash, the world crashed for her, and she had a PTSD reaction. It took me five years working with county services, working with the, the sheriffs, getting her in hospitalization, going back and forth with doctors. Finally, I got you know, a conservatorship of her uh, through the grace of God. And I would like to work a little bit more carefully with families that are having problems to allow them, show them what I did so that when the time came, I was able to intervene. And she's fine. That was 2013. I released her conservatorship, and she's great. So this is not, you know, this needs to be treated like an illness. It should not be treated like a, a plague or something that is not, not correctable. It is, in most cases, with medication. Um, work to preserve our natural resources beach and trails and open space. I'm on the beach every day. I love it. And I ride the trails with my horse. I jog. I, I love this area. And we have to preserve it and be sure that it stays, it stays good for tourists and better for us that live here. Uh, support our communities is really important. I want to help our local businesses to thrive. They've been through the pandemic, and now they're dealing with, uh, you know, the inflationary impacts, labor shortages, whatever we can do to streamline regulations and not to put more pressure on them, I think, from the county level, I will do. I will work with cities to be sure that we have those things, those needs met. Transportation issues are going to be really important. This section of the district, the, uh, the Costa Mesa, Newport, and Irvine section, are grid pattern streets, totally different needs than what you'll find in South County, where the five is actually the main thoroughfare through most of our communities. It's spaghetti down there because of all of the, the, the topography, the, the hillsides. It's just very different. So we do have a lot of land use because of my career in, in, in banking and finance, as well as home building. And, and all of those things development. I'm running out of time. Uh, the Rancho Mission Viejo, Ladera, Branch, Coto de Casa are all unincorporated areas where the supervisor will ask as a mayor and also have permitting. And I will be able to streamline and help them and be sure that I watch the contracts that we have for the airport and the harbor. So thank you very much, Diane Harkey. Uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Your next speaker is uh, Kevin Muldoon. Kevin? Thank you. Mind if I stand? Thank you so much for hosting us, and thank you to Speak Up Newport for putting this together. Uh, my name is Kevin Muldoon. I'm the current mayor of Newport Beach. I'm accompanied with half of the other former mayors this evening in the room tonight. It's great to be here with you all. I was raised here in Orange County, and I'm privileged enough to be raising my family here in Newport Beach. I do not own Muldoon's Irish Pub. Everyone knows that by now, but I like to remind people it's still the best place to go for a, with your family, but I have, there's no connection to it. I was raised in Lake Forest and spent a little bit, a couple years in Laguna Yellow. My parents moved south, so I really understand South Orange County. And obviously, I've been serving here on Newport Beach City Council for eight years, so I definitely understand Newport Beach. Uh, I believe there are a couple issues that are very important to a seemingly unimportant office that actually is very important to your well-being and your health and safety. The Orange County Board of Supervisors has a direct impact on crime and homelessness. Those are the two major issues that I believe we all should be concerned about, and I view it as a nonpartisan, or if you will, bipartisan issue that we can come together to agree upon. When neighbors and communities are working together to solve homelessness and crime, those numbers go down, and that will be my continued goal to do as a Board of Supervisors member. 
Here in Newport Beach, we've done a couple of innovative things. We've worked with our nonprofit partner whose job is to know the individual identity and build a relationship with every homeless person to help them get the help they need to change their lives around. We also have a homeless liaison peace officer, and we've started a new program that they've done in Huntington Beach as well called uh, Be Well OC, which is having tremendous results. Essentially, it's traveling experts who are psychiatrists, therapists, who go in the streets, and they get to know those individuals who need help. I believe it's in the best interest of those individuals who are dying at alarming rates by being out in the elements. It's in the best interest of the individuals and the community to get them sheltered, get them supportive housing, and get them back on the feet with jobs. That's actually a very important role the county plays a part in because of the social services we provide the interactions we have with local peace officers, and the influence we have with faith-based groups who are playing, playing a really large role. Number two issue, arguably number one, depends on what your household is like, crime. Crime is a very serious issue. Here in Newport Beach, we've seen an increase of property crimes by a significant amount, which I believe are based on Prop 47 and 57, and that's manifesting and smash and grabs in flagrant disregard for our laws. We need to stop that crime. Luckily, we've seen a dramatic decrease in violent criminal offenses here in Newport Beach. So I want to keep that trend to keep violent offenses low in Newport Beach and South Orange County and to combat the rising property crimes that we're seeing throughout the state, which I believe are the fault of Sacramento's, but I believe if we band together, we can see a reduction in those criminal activities. The airport is a very important issue for me. I live under the flight path. I joke sometimes it looks like the plane's going to clip my chimney. And at 7 o'clock and 7.01 and 7.02 and 7.03, I'm reminded of the flight path that's right over my head. I would like to see you return to NADP-1, which was a dramatic procedure that you remember was like a Disneyland roller coaster ride where you really take off pretty quickly from the airport. That creates less noise for those who are below, and the plane's higher up so pollution can be dissipated. I believe that that is something that Orange County Board of Supervisors member can have a dramatic influence over because the airport is county owned and county controlled. So as a Board of Supervisor member, my th top three goals uh, would be to reduce crime, reduce homelessness, and reduce flight, noise, and, per and, uh, and pollution. And I ask for your consideration on the June ballot. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kevin. And next is Suzanne Swallow to speak on behalf of Pat Bates. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak on behalf of Pat. Um, before we got this invitation from Speak Up, she had committed to do something with her family. So I appreciate you letting her honor that commitment to her family. So for those who don't know, Senator Bates was the founding member, of, excuse me, the founding mayor of Laguna Niguel. And through that, um, it is quite a process to get county, state approval, et cetera, to become an incorporated city. And that has made her be a passionate advocate for local control. That is something that in her 30 years of government has always rang true to her. And we've seen in the last two years with the coronavirus epidemic how important local control is. We know that what happens in our wonderful community of Orange County, that what works here might not work in San Francisco. It certainly probably doesn't work in Los Angeles, and it might not work in a rural county like Kern. So we really need to make sure that we support people who know how important local control is and know how valuable it is that we can make decisions that are best for our community. So after, the, after being elected to council, um, Senator Bates was elected to the assembly where she served for several years, and then, she, as was mentioned, she was the fourth woman elected to the Orange County Board of Supervisors. And currently, she is serving as one of Orange County's state senators. So she has three issues that are very important to her that she is committed to working on. And those three issues are, first and foremost, as we've heard a lot, um, homelessness. We spend billions and billions and billions of dollars, taxpayer dollars, to fight homelessness. And what do we have to show for it? What does the state look like with homelessness? Who's accountable for people's hard-earned dollars? We need to make sure that we are accountable and we are finding solutions that, are, that work and that are measurable. We can't have a plan if it's not measurable, and that's something that's really important to the senator. Something that you might not know about the senator is, in addition to approaching the issue of homelessness um, as a mother and a grandmother and a wife, she's also a social worker. So there's definitely that compassion that we need to have for both the community that is deeply impacted by the issue of homelessness, but also for the individual who is suffering homelessness. So we need to make sure we're compassionate on both sides of that, and so that is something that the senator is committed to. The second issue that she feels passionately about is ensuring that we're fighting high taxes waste and abuse in government. Um, 
And there is not, I don't think there's a level of, or an agency or anything that you couldn't cut from. We need to make sure that we are always looking for ways that we can be smart with our money, be smart with our resources, and everything that the taxpayers give the Board of Supervisors to be good stewards of. Ultimately, it's the taxpayers' money, and we need to make sure that we are smart with that money. Um, lastly, she is committed to ensuring um, police and sheriff have the resources that they need to fight crime. That's something that you've obviously heard from everyone today. Crime is up and we need to make sure that we have people that are passionately advocating for our sheriff's department, for our local law enforcement agencies, that they have the dollars and the resources that they need. And that's why it's important to send someone back to the board who has those relationships. We're going to see a lot of money coming out of Sacramento and from the federal government because of ARPA. Um, there's a lot of dollars floating around in terms of grants and things of that nature and Senator Bates is in a unique position where she has been um, obviously working in the state legislature for a number of years as well as has great relationships with our federal delegation so we need a strong advocate to make sure that Orange County gets the dollars that they are rightfully owed and that is fair and that the governor and or whomever doesn't just give dollars to San Francisco or Los Angeles and lastly I'll add um, we, saw, we talked a little bit about inflation and how troubling that is. Obviously, we saw all of us probably saw the report of 8.5% inflation and what that means for Orange County families. Um, I'll tell you, Senator Bates led the effort in 2018 to recall Senator Newman. And the reason she did that is because she was ahead of her time. She knew how critical gas was. We've seen gas double since then. Could you imagine? Four years ago, she fought that gas tax. We successfully recalled... Senator Newman, and now we have gas doubled, and we got to do something about it, and we definitely have to make sure that we have someone on the Board of Supervisors who is going to look at every fee. Every year, the Board of Supervisors has a budget. Every year is an opportunity for the supervisors to come to comb through that budget and see what we can do. Um, the senator is committed to going through that budget line by line and seeing what we can do for the taxpayers and the good people of Orange County. Thank you, and I hope you vote when you get your ballot next month for Pat Bates. Thank, thank you very much. And next, uh, uh, Katrina Foley will have two minutes for rebuttal. Okay, well, the good news is that I'm already doing everything that they talked about. And so, <laughs> so I'm working on watching the budget, making sure that every dollar we spend in Orange County has some metrics for success and is actually efficiently being used. I actually proposed that we send a letter to the governor to suspend the gas tax and, and to also put some protections in so that if it got suspended, that the oil companies didn't just keep increasing the price. I actually am working on reducing homelessness. We've done an audit. We've determined there's $1.8 billion being spent on this. That is way too much money for the results that we're receiving. We are fixing that. On April 20th, I invite you to join us in our investigatory hearing on homelessness, the cost of homelessness, and recommendations and solutions. We're working uh, hand in hand with the Sheriff's Department, with the healthcare agency, and with our local nonprofits and our cities to make sure that we're actually doing right by the taxpayers and making sure that we're delivering results. As it relates to the airport, I probably work 10 to 12 hours a week just on the airport alone. And we are going to have a flight path that's a lot better than the one that Mayor Muldoon mentioned. We actually have got the FAA to approve a better, quieter flight path. And that took a lot of work by our committee. The moment I got elected, I had an uh, airport advisory team formed. Sue Dvorak, she's on our airport commission. She is a local resident who cares. Dennis Bress is on our advisory team. We have Charles Clove. We have Nancy Scarbo. We have so many people advising us to make sure that we do something real at the airport. So much more to come, but I'm already doing all that work. So please, just send me back. There's so much more to do. <laughs> Thank you very much.
like that approach, quite honestly. Um, I'm already doing it, so send me back. But unfortunately, there's a lot of things left undone. Andrew Doe started a program with the homelessness uh, a few years ago, and he has had a lot of success in his district uh, with, with using the wraparound services. And so, you know, there is a lot more to do, and there's a lot more to do in this district regarding that. I would like to see us get involved more with the faith-based, uh, which I have been looking into, and also ensure that we, we separate, segment them into what the needs are. And that's what a lot of these organizations are able to do. Be Well OC is, is, con, is primarily concerned with mental health, and that is a huge service. That's something that we need, and a lot of homeless are mentally ill. 25%, I believe, is what was our count. So that's, that's going to be a huge, huge help. Uh, but we also need to work with all the other county wraparound services, the law enforcement, the, uh, the health services, and others to be sure that there is a co cohesive policy force. And we can do that. It's being done. Um, the airport issue. My daughter lives in Dover Shores. She hears it all the time. I have a concern for it. I'm not sure what can really be done for it. I like the big takeoff. I personally like to ride in that. I thought it was like the e-ticket. I loved it. But um, I, I think that we can do more about that. We, if that's gone away and if other flight paths are available, I would definitely support that. Um, and sober living homes, licensing, and all that, I've been working on that for years. I worked on the Dana Point City Council, and I worked on in the legislature. It's just this continuing saga of homes. And now there are the other, the other homes are, are here now. They're not called sober living homes. There's another name for them. But they're basically the same thing by the state. So we need to work on licensing and finding where they have actually violated their licenses in advertising for services that they're not licensed to provide. So thank you very much. It's Diane Harkey, uh, dianeharkey.com. Real easy to find me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, Kevin Muldoon. Uh, you have uh, two minutes. Thank you. I just want to thank you all for... Uh... How's that? Thank you so much for looking out for me. I want to thank you all for this evening for putting this together. It's been great to be on this panel with you ladies. And... Um, what you should know about me is that I care very much about this community, and I come from a criminal enforcement. Uh, as foreign prosecutor, I really believe in our first responders. I will never defund the police. I will never sign a pledge and try to hide that I'm going to defund the police. You can count on me. And that's something that we all know matters. It doesn't matter which way the political winds blow or what my party boss tries to tell me. I will always support our law enforcement. And I believe that at the end of the day that if you vote for me, you know the same way I want my young family to be safe is the same way I want your family to be safe. Thank you so much for your time this evening. God bless. Thank you. And next, Pat Bates is spokesman. Thank you. Yeah. I really do appreciate you letting me come and speak on her behalf. And there's just a few things I would like to point out as we're wrapping up. Um, the senator was honored to get the Howard Jarvis Taxpayer Association endorsement. That meant a lot to her. It, it meant that um, the Howard Jarvis Association is knows how much the senator is doing to protect our tax dollars. That is crucial when we are dealing with 8.5% inflation. That looks like it's just going to con continue to keep climbing. So I did want to point that out. And I also wanted to point out that the senator has spent decades working on this sober living home issue. And she has the experience that we need to make sure we get what we need in Orange County to deal with this crisis. She has the connections. We need to make sure that we are sending to the Board of Supervisors people who are experienced and that have the relationships that we need at the state level as well as at the federal level to get things done. A lot of this requires law changes and it re requires those relationships. And I hope that you'll vote for Pat Bates and you can find her at patbatesforsupervisor.com. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, now, now it is time for, um, for you to ask questions. I'm going to ask you to please uh, line up at the microphone if you would. Um, we want to keep the questions very short, not to exceed 30 seconds. If you go over 30 seconds, we're going to ring the bell. Um, and the, the answers will be one minute. Also, uh, you may ask a question of either one candidate or all the candidates or a couple of the candidates. If you ask a question of any one candidate, 
their opponent is given a minute to also answer the question if they so choose. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Dennis Bress. I'm a resident of Balboa Island. Uh, very informative night tonight. Thank you very much for putting this on, Speak Up Newport. So um, if you are elected, then um, I would be a constituent. So I would love to have the answer from all of you on these three really basic, simple questions. One, is Biden the duly elected president of the United States? Two, are you vaxxed and boosted? And three, should women have complete control of their own bodies and family planning like men with no government control? <clears throat> Easy three questions. Each of you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I will invite anyone who wishes to respond to that question to go do so. Okay, Diane. I have no problem answering yes to all of that. But there are, I said, I... Am I on the mic? Now okay. you are. You have to I, be kind of I close have, to it. I have no problem with answering yes to all of those. The uh, deal is, is that we have laws oh. and and uh, other things um, that impact us. Um, I think that the uh, the women's issue in particular is going is going to be a very important issue this this year. And uh, I I would like to give women a lot more choices than just one choice if they are single. I would like to give them a lot of options for care and adoption of their child if they choose not to have it. I am very much in that camp where I want to give them Thank many you. options. Thank, Thank you. you. Does anyone wish to respond further? Okay. I'm, I'm Next. Just say yes. Oh, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes, it's easy. Yes. <laughs> okay. I, I don't want to cut you off if anybody wants to say anything. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, yes. Next questioner. Hi. My name is Jim Walker. I'm the owner of the bungalow, and uh, nice to have all of you here tonight. My question, really, I'm going to focus on Diane and Benjamin. Currently in Sacramento, there's a movement to change the work week to 32 hours versus 40 hours. I wonder what your feelings on that are, considering the damage it's going to have on small business, and more importantly, and equally important, the damage it's going to have on hourly people, because their hours will be cut. Businesses currently are facing a challenge finding employees. Labor cost is high. This will only, in my opinion, in my experience, escalate and make it even worse. So I'd like to have your thoughts. Uh, well, I'm, can you hear me? No, I don't think it's on. Hello? I can't. I can't. It's, it's Hello? Can you hear me? No, it's on now. It takes, it takes a second to warm up. It's very easy. When I saw that in the papers, Jim, that yeah, bill was proposed, it's an, it's an easy no, 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 no. I mean, it is so kind. It sounds like France. That's the maximum work hours in France. I mean, it is a, a socialist type of program of limiting workers' hours. People want to work. People want to work and have fulfilling lives. And the 40 hour work week has been in existence for what, 70, 80 years now? Correct. Um, so I support your, <laughs> I just support 40 hours and letting small business do what it wants to do and hire people and be successful and be profitable and let's get everybody back to work at 40 hours or as long as they want to work. I, I support that, thank you. Thank you, thank you Diane. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, same answer here. Perfect. No, no, no. As a small business owner, I told you that people it's a, have a right to work, and the 40 hours a week is pretty balanced work there. We are California of the United States. We are now France. We are now a socialist country. We are a constitutional republic here. And especially during, after, as I say, the transformation of society after the pandemic to the endemic, you know, we already face a uh, labor shortage here. And this uh, policy, just like AB5, will only make things worse. Let people choose what they want and how they want. Okay, thank, thank you. you very thank you. much. Does anyone else have a question? Yes, please, please come right up. I'm a little, little shorter than the last person. Hi, my name's Susan Meyer. I'm a Newport Beach resident. I live over there by uh, Talbert Regional Park. A supervisor Foley was talking about her personal experience in working with homeless. Personally, I went to the Orange County Board of Supervisors. I had asked them years ago to do spend some money, and they refused. They wouldn't even listen to me. Then a couple years later, I became a resident in Newport Beach. I went to the Newport Beach City Council, asked them to join in with Costa Mesa, who is a model city dealing with homeless. They turned me down. Only Joy Brenner said yes. 
I want to explore and see what they're doing in Costa Mesa. So my question is, is what personal experience, not your board, not your council, not your assembly, not anything, you, what is your personal experience in working to solve the homeless issue? Is that directed at the supervisorial candidates or all the candidates? I think all candidates you'd like to answer. Okay, okay, that's fine. Um, I think we should probably, since we started with you the first time, we probably should start with Pat Bates's um, representative if it, it, your end of the table and go this way. It, I'm gonna follow up last, thank you. Pardon? I'm no, <laughs> no, I, I picked the order. <laughs> I want to. I want to make sure that everybody gets an opportunity. So I get. I let you go first. Well, if she, okay. That's, well, that's not at enough. this point, I would have to follow up, and I'm happy to provide that answer to Leader Jane. Okay, that's fine. That's perfectly a reasonable answer. Um, Kevin Muldoon, do you have a comment? Yes, uh, please. You know. Um, Thank you. You know, as a prosecutor, we dealt with this issue often. Often the people will get cited for violations of the local municipal code, sometimes misdemeanors, sometimes felonies for activity related to um, homeless, homelessness, like, like drug abuse or uh, camping at night. That really is not the right way to deal with it, in my opinion. They would be booked, they would spend a night or two in jail, and the judge would just take that time served towards their sentence, the fine, and have it reduced, or have them released. So I don't believe that that's the best solution to have them part of, of that old system. The new system, okay. uh, a couple of seconds, just because I was checking my mic. Uh, a couple of seconds, that's the new, the new system I've been involved, which is just being a good human and interacting with these individuals, which I've done through my church group, and I believe that creating those relationships go a long way, and professionals are involved as well, but I believe that we as a community can solve this problem. Thank you very much. Okay, Diane Harkey. What we are doing at the county now is actually setting out a team that goes and talks with them, meets with them, find out what the needs are. And that's what I intend to do. That's what I have seen happen. And so they can refer them if they're mentally ill, if they got substance abuse or whatnot. Now you can't force people into treatment, but you can actually earn their trust and have facilities in which to move them. And then if you do have the facilities, like we saw at the riverbed in Anaheim and whatnot, if you do have the facilities, you can move them out, but you have to have the facility, which is what I intend on providing. Okay, Katrina Foley. Great, so the question was, what have I personally done? So for decades as a city council member, I called attention to this issue. Uh, when I became mayor, within the first month, we got a unanimous vote to open up a shelter. We took what was an area of 19th Street and the Lions Park area, and we transformed it so that people could go to the park. And I often tell this story. I was in my flip-flops going to the park with one of our police officers, and she said, Mayor, don't go there because there's needles. And so that day we shut the park down. We now have a beautiful library and a park, and it's cleaned up, and we'll continue that effort. Thank you. It's no, a Benjamin. very touching question. Personally, as you said, you know, uh, before the speech, that uh, once what I got back from military, I was classified as a homeless veteran, and I walk, you know, with a backpack and a walking can in the street of Harlem, and the people stare at me like, "What the heck is this guy doing here?" So it's it's my personal experience. And later on, I volunteer as a uh, 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 for the outreach program to uh, to help uh, the veterans get out straight, and uh, by that time, it's caught up them. Now it's improved a little bit. Means the VA program works. Now it's about 18 percent. What I gonna do is I, I already categorized that. There's few category there. We will have a high down solution for each of them, and we also have to from, from policy side to shape to get the people that need a help instead of falling through the crack. I'll say that, and I believe we, if I got there, we truly will have improvement for the homeless situation here, not just okay. sort of. Thank you. Your time. Your time is Thank up. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's not working. Give us the other one, Diane. Oh, is that one? Oh, I think that was one. Yeah. Okay. Can you can you hear me? Okay, real quickly. Uh, a lot of cities are now coming together. I mean, we've been trying to work together. We certainly started. I, when I was mayor, I formed the Ad Hoc Committee on Homelessness. And Joy Brenner absolutely was a leader, but we were all leaders. We supported unanimously to do the joint shelter with Costa Mesa. It took a while. Uh, we now have the surround services through the shelter with Be Well, with a city net. We are dealing with this. It's now dealing with the chronic homeless, frankly, that refuse help. And we're working with that 
got through the mental illness portion. So it is, it is a state problem. When I'm in Sacramento, we're going to deal with it directly. We've got $60 billion of surplus. I think we could find a little bit to help the local governments deal with homelessness more effectively okay. and help the people in need. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Next Good evening, question. everybody. Thank you so much for all being here and enlightening us on your viewpoints. I'd like to ask all of you one question. How do you all feel about the decriminalization of being able to steal up to $950 and not having it be a crime, just being a misdemeanor? We're all faced with the flash and grab and kids in Ralph's Market stealing alcohol and nothing happens. It's a huge problem that we never had in Newport Beach or anywhere in the state of California. What can we do and what will you do to help us with that? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Okay. Yeah. We'll, All right. start, we'll start with we'll you, start again. Uh, It's an easy answer. The voters approved uh, Prop 47 and Prop 57 that changed the felony descriptions of crimes. We have to, when I'm in Sacramento, we're going, in fact, there ha the Republicans have introduced legislation to overturn 47 and 57 to make crime illegal again. And those and that 950 is just a blank check for anybody to go steal and not be punished. And we know that the going to jail is no bail now. I mean, the bail laws have to change, the sentencing laws have to change, parole has to change. That's what I intend to do. And I'm against, to answer your question, decriminalization of our crimes. Thank you. Uh, regarding Thank you. the specific questions, that's our, our county register uh, survey. I already answered that. If I got there, the temporary, uh, the short-term solution would be uh, lower that threshold from $950 to $400. And instead, of, you can receive multiple tickets every day to a single ticket. Just like uh, if you got a warning by the cop for the speeding, the next one, he's going to stop you right at a ticket. And you go to court. And that's a temporary solution. Long-term solution, we need to appeal part of the Prop 47 that uh, make this type of repeat uh, offense a more serious crime than what it is. Okay, thank you. Next, uh, Katrina. So at the Board of Supervisors, we don't get to vote on uh, the state legislature issues, but as a mayor, I didn't support Prop 47 or 57, and I think we all are seeing the impacts. Um, but as a supervisor, I can commit to fully funding our law enforcement, and making sure that they have the tools, making sure we have amazing grit programs, after school programs, making sure that we have a path, a workforce development path, so that individuals in our community have a path to the middle class and to a career and stability so they, they won't turn to crime. Thank you. <laughs> I was there when Prop 47 and 57 passed in AB 109, which tur turned the long-term prisoners from the from Fulton, Folsom down to our county jails. It's all bad policy. It needs to be reversed. As the county supervisor, though, you can fully fund the uh, sheriff's department and all the ancillary services that they need. You can put more people on patrol. It's 950 again and again and again. It's not 1950. So it's really important that we get a handle on this. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin? Yeah, uh, I wrote two op-eds opposing 47 to 57 when they were introduced, and they're the daily pilots. And um, here in Newport Beach, we fully enforce every crime, so we'll take them down, we'll book them. We'll make their lives uh, difficult if they're going to come here and commit crimes. Uh, they're not just going to get off and w with a citation on site, which many counties and cities are doing. So as a county bar supervisor member, the county would have the same policy. I would encourage hiring more sheriffs if need be, and I would encourage our sheriffs, who are excellent, to continue to force the, the law and to make it difficult for these individuals to commit crimes. Thank you. Senator, the senator sponsored two pieces of legislation that would have altered Prop 47. Unfortunately, the majority party in Sacramento killed both of those bills. Um, it is, you know, it's a problem. It's something that we need to, it's why we need to make sure we send good representatives to Sacramento. Um, on the board, though, we can make sure that we're fully funding the sheriff's department, make sure we're working with our contract cities to give them the resources that they need, and make sure that our unincorporated areas are protected. Thank you. I have time for one more question. We lose the room in, 15, uh, in, in five minutes. 
Hi, my name is Sue Dvorak, and I have a question about the airport. Uh, we continue to hear rumors about um, expansion of the runway at John Wayne Airport, and I'd like to know, I guess, from the supervisors how you feel about um, any expansion at the airport, runway expansion, operational expansion, um, or physical expansion. Thank you. Okay. Would you like to go first or last, or wh where would you like to go? I can go now. Okay. Um, I Thank oppose you. expansion of the runway uh, and of the air. You know, in 2019, we all went to the Board of Supervisors. I got 20,000 signatures on a petition to stop expansion of the airport. And so I continue to have that position. And any effort uh, to expand the airport runway, I will know about before you do. And I will let you know. <laughs> Am I on? Maybe. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. I also oppose any airport expansion. We have uh, Ontario for large flights. They're dying for business. They want business. They want more business. And so I was I was very opposed to expanding and or making an international airport here in Orange County because Ontario wanted it. And we quite honestly have a suburban and urban community. We do not need an airport expansion here. We have a good one. It works. Let's keep it, but let's not make it grow. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin? Yeah, I totally agree. I'm against expanding the airport and expanding the runway. And there will be a time, I believe, that there'll be quieter jet engines that will be able to take off, but we cannot extend the runway and trust that that's what's going to happen. Some are saying we're going to bring in these quieter planes. We can't trust that. We need to keep our runway the way it is. Okay, and Pat Bates, representative, please. The senator opposes expansion. Okay. As long as Mr. Yu gets a chance to respond as well. Sure. Technology, ain't it fun? No. It works. That one works. They said that one works. Does this work? Let me just. This one works? Okay. We need, yeah, we need, we need the mics for as the. As a resident TV of Newport show. Beach. I agree with everyone who says no expansion, but there's a, there's a small little detail we have to be aware of. We don't want runway expansion, and we do not want expansion of general aviation aircraft. That is not covered by the settlement agreement. So we want to be sure, whoever is supervisor, that they keep John Wayne exactly how it is operating today, with the same runway today, no expansion operationally. That's kind of what Sue was saying, as well as physically. Thank you. Okay, and Mr. Yu? I grew up in part of New York, which is a uh airplane job like a, a bomber bomber and uh, as a former sky team and sky, star islands uh, uh, top flyers i fly out of john one all the time i think john one is a regional airport serve the regional consumer needs we got ontario there for for the international and the cargo we got lax want all their business there john one should stay where they are and the because the pandemic has reduced the capacity, and eventually we should reduce the capacity instead of increase the capacity. As long as it feeds the local, local needs, that's more than enough. What we want to hear from John Y. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm changing the name. I want to thank all of, our, uh, all of our participants and thank all of you for coming. And I'm going to turn the meeting now back over to our President Ed Selich. You know, thank you, Deborah, for doing a great job moderating this evening. Appreciate that. And Robin, you were Johnny on the spot with the bill. <laughs> Let anyone go over too far. So thank you for all your work, and thank you, all you candidates. Uh, this really is democracy in action, and really appreciate you guys being here this evening. Just a couple final uh, words here. Remember, May the 11th is the Measure B Elect the Mayor Forum here. Get here early. I think it's going to be a crowded room. Mayor's Dinner, May 19th, it's going to be at the new Vea Hotel, that's the old Marriott that's been all remodeled, so be one of the first big events up there, so you want to get up there. Uh, also, again, thanks to the bungalow, um, you know, please go out and support those guys, uh, go down there, have dinner. And with that, uh, have a good evening, and we'll see you on May the 9th, or the 11th, excuse me. <laughs>